Hey there. Um, I wanted to talk about replicate deployments. And so today I'm going to live stream off the cuff, uh, change this paint by text app that uses replicate to use replicate deployments instead of a public model. So there are a couple of reasons for this. Uh, one is that this app is using my personal replicate API token. And when I go to replicate.com and I view the dashboard, there's a lot of stuff in here that wasn't actually done by me because it's happening on these separate um, apps that I've built or that I've used my token for. So I want to get this off of my personal account. The other thing is that um, the underlying model that this app uses is um, called instruct picks to picks and by default it runs on NV NVIDIA A100 GPUs. Um, those are in high demand, they're also very expensive and there is a different GPU type A40 that um, is probably a more cost effective uh, mo um, GPU to use for this particular model. So what I want to do is just try creating um, a replicate deployment for this. So and I'll explain what that is as I get into it. So first of all, what does this app do? It's an app that takes uh, images and text instructions and modifies the image based on the text prompt. So we can say make his jacket out of leather and we'll get back an image that looks much like this one except the jacket will have kind of a, a leathery sheen assuming it's working as expected. There we go. Okay, so I have the app cloned here. I'm trying out this cursor IDE, which is like VS Code with some extra AI stuff built in. So we built this app actually before there was a replicate NPM client. So it's actually just doing really kind of basic raw HTTP requests using nodes built-in uh, fetch client. So I think the first thing I might want to do here is actually just um, replace this with the um, replicate npm client. The other thing is, let's jump into looking at um, what deployments are. So if we go to the docs, on the side here we have a configure model deployment. So what are deployments? They are um, a way for you to sort of control um, the uh, scaling behavior of a model that you're running. They give you a custom endpoint that you can um, point your code to, and the endpoint you can sort of configure that endpoint with um, by changing the number of. Uh, Instances that it'll run min or max instances as I look at this I'm realizing there's probably we probably need a better sort of visualization of What deployments do there's a lot of words on this page, but um, It'll probably make a little more sense as we jump in so Is there a call to action to create a deployment here? No um, Navigate to any model or model version. Okay, so let's go back to here and I see oh sure enough There's a deploy button here on struct picks to picks. So I'm going to click that and I'm in the context of the replicate org. So I'm going to create a deployment um, named after um, paint by text. So let's call it paint by text. There's the model name and there's only one version of that model. So that's the one we're going to use. And it looks like it's actually defaulting to an A40 RNA 100, so let's switch it over to a 40 GPU. And we want to keep this model running all the time so that the demo app is snappy. Um, what happens if we just leave this blank? Does that mean that the max will go up to 20? I don't actually know. Let's, let's try it and see what happens. Um, so I'm going to create this deployment. Oh, no, it wants a number. So we'll, we'll leave it at five, like it defaulted to. All right, so this is kind of telling me the maximum bill I might have from this, the base bill based on this being zero, one, if I change it to zero, 
this will go down to zero. This will mean that we have at least one running instance all the time and nobody hits cold boots. So let's create this deployment. Cool, now I'm, on, now I'm viewing the deployment for this model and it's got some instructions here on how to use this in my application. And conveniently we're using Node.js, so this is exactly what I need. So I already went into Replicate's API tokens and created a new token. Uh, this is cool, I can now do a screencast where I can go to this page and not have to worry because everything is obscured. So I, create this, I created this new API token specifically for this deployment. I can copy that and now I'll go back to, where was I? This deployment here and let's split my screen. So in my cursor view over here, um, I'm going to start by installing the Replicate API client. And then I'm going to grab this code and um, there are two places in the paint by text app where it's talking to the replicate API. One is the uh, index.js handler in this Next.js app where it is creating the prediction. And then this other one is where it's actually polling for the result of the prediction. So I'll have to update the code. And actually, this code can probably remain the same, but this code will change. So let's bring in this and um, that we want to keep. We'll initialize the client. Here's the part that we want to take and put it down here somewhere. So body, headers, response, blah, blah, blah. We're going to re be replacing a lot of this stuff. So let's just say, yeah, uh, replicate is the owner of the deployment. Paint by text is the name of the deployment. And then we need to specify the inputs. So input is the request body. So I think that means we can get rid of all of this code, which is pretty cool. Um, we might want to keep this user agent thing. So when we initialize the JavaScript client, it has a user agent option. So let's keep that. And the client has TypeScript annotations or whatever you call them. So kind of easier to get it right in the editor, which is great. Okay, so I think we can take out the headers a bit. We can take out this body. We're no longer going to be pointing directly at this, um, this model because we're using a deployment which wants to do it instead. So I'm actually going to leave this around just for um, for later reference, and I'll explain why. Um, so this we still need. This does some kind of cleaning up of empty values in the in the body, and so maybe what did this what did this used to do? It used to Respond with res dot and JSON string file prediction, something like this. So we can just do we want to keep that, I suppose. Maybe we'll console out all the prediction for our own debugging use here. So let's just see what happens if we run this. Um, maybe we'll do it over here. Oh, interesting. Command K 
in the terminal usually means clear the terminal, but if it looks like in cursor, command K has another function, which is running commands. So I'll just type clear, and run dev. So I should now have that running. Okay, it looks like 3000 was already in use, so it's running on 3001. See what we get. Okay, so we've got a running app. We've got the the um, logs here up for the server. But I needed to set my API key. So um, I'll go into the dot env for this. Is there a dot env file in here? No. So, okay, this will be interesting. If I do, sorry, I'm bouncing all around a little over here. Okay, I'm gonna open another terminal and I think that I still have the API key in my clipboard, but just to be sure, I'm gonna copy it. Let's see if I can pull this off without revealing my API key in the screencast. So I'm gonna do pb paste, And I'm going to pipe that into. <laughs> how, do I, how do I do this? Let's see. Echo uh, replicate API token equals foo. Dot env. Does that work? Now we look at dot env. Yes. Okay. And then I'll do. Um, See if this this magic works. PB. What is it? PB. PB paste. Just so one word, no underscores or anything. So I'm sorry. This must be a thrilling screencast. Long and long-winded, but okay, whatever. Maybe it's useful for someone. Okay, so I'm gonna. Put that out into my .env. Pray for, pray that that worked. Not look so I don't, <laughs> so I don't ruin it for the screencast. Um, and then, okay, that probably means that I need to go back to the server, kill it, start it over, come back to the local app here, start it up. Swap sunflowers with roses. Let's see what happens. Oh, something. Cannot reassign to a variable declared with const. Okay, so go back into our index.js. And yeah, it looks like, what are we doing here? We are creating the prediction and then we are awaiting it. And so that's not right which suggests that this is, that our example on the deployments page is actually wrong. So I'm gonna take a slight detour. I'm gonna go into the replicate web app and look for an alias code to cursor. So even though I'm used to using Visual Studio Code, it'll just hijack it and run it in cursor instead. Um, I'm gonna look for const prediction. And looks like that might be where that's happening. Yep, so let's change this to a let because we need to overwrite it here. So this is interesting because 
the example here is actually awaiting the result of the prediction, but we don't necessarily want to do that in our application. We just want to create the prediction and then pull for it as we were before. So a couple things going on here. Let's go ahead and um, just commit this little change to replicate web. Let's see if I still have the, I don't have the error page anymore. Um, Changes back to the const, so it's broken. Try it. Grab this error. Switch it back. And then create a branch and replicate web that says uh, fix node code example deployment. Here's left instead of const because we modify the prediction. All right, so I'm going to open a PR. here of working on um, the paint by text app. Okay, so a little roundabout there, but um, we actually don't need to do this awaiting the prediction because all we want to do in this endpoint is just create the prediction and we already have code to pull for it. So I'm going to just take this out. And in fact, that means we can leave the const, funnily, funnily enough, even though for that other code example, that is something we want to change. Okay, so I'm going to leave this like this. And it looks like the app is restarting with those changes. So let's go back, uh, close the production app, look at the local one, rerun it, see if it works now. Make his jacket out of letter. Leather, not letter. And then I think what I can do is go over to replicate. Not that, not that. <clears throat> Look at the deployment and see if there are predictions coming in. I haven't run any predictions with this deployment. Hmm. Are you sure? What's happening in my code? Did I hit an error? Request to paint by text failed with status 422 unprocessable entity invalid ver version or not permitted. Okay, I think what's happening here is that I already have a replicate API token specified in my um, environment here as part of my like dot files, and I suspect that. Okay, I'm just going to reveal the token here and blow it away. So go ahead and copy this token and <laughs> try, to, try to use it, but I'm, I'm going to kill it. So it's not going to work. Um, so I think what's happening here is this token is not actually getting used. It's just using the one that's already set in my environment. So let's do something silly to get around this and say, um, What's the best way to do this? Um, Cause I still want to keep the one in my local environment, um, not have to shut that off. So what if I just change everything to use Eight. 
just change the name of the environment variable. Replicate API key. Let's call it that. So now, if we run this, hopefully we don't get a permissions error. prediction running here. Hey, look, it's running a prediction on that deployment. That's good. Let's see if it actually works. It might take a minute because we're going to be the, I don't know if deployments, when you create a deployment and you set a minimum instance number of one, if it automatically warms up that instance or if you have to actually make a very first prediction to get it going. So we'll find out. Wow, it looks like it worked. Amazing. Where's the confetti button on this thing? Uh